Today on History Eats, we take a look at the quintessential Texas meal, a style of cooking born from the dominance of the Texas cattle industry, the thrift of small-town Texas butchers, and the patience of backyard cooks across the state. Today, we cook up some Central Texas-style brisket. My name is Heath Hammer, and I love food, and I love history. No one has ever accused me of being a cook, but I don't mind trying. Come into the kitchen with me, and let's see if we can cook up some history eats. Few things will start an argument in Texas faster than a discussion on what constitutes good barbecue. We can't even agree on how to spell the word barbecue, much less on what it means or even where it came from. Depending on where in the world you are, barbecue can refer to a way of cooking, a piece of cooking equipment, or a whole genre of food style. We can start figuring out the mystery of the origins of Central Texas barbecue brisket by looking back in history to the time of the Spanish conquistadors. Exactly which Native American culture the Spanish noticed cooking meats on a framework of sticks over a fire is debated by historians. What we do know is that they called the style of cooking barbacoa, and the name has come down to us as barbecue. Fast forward a few centuries, and you find barbecue becoming a really popular style of cooking in the United States. Usually it refers specifically to cooking meat over a low, low heat source over a long period of time, half a day or more, with the smoke from the burning wood infusing the meat with flavor. In most of the US, the dominant farm animal was the humble pig. So for most Americans, barbecue refers to pork. Pork ribs, pulled pork, just about any part of a pig could be smoked over a fire. But in Texas, cattle is king. Texas barbecue might include pork, but the reigning champ of Texas barbecue is a cut of meat known as the brisket. From Elgin to Lockhart, from Luling to Lexington, times were lean in Texas. That meant that the poor could rarely afford the good cuts of meat. What they could afford was brisket, muscle in the chest of a cow that was tough, stringy, and not a treat to eat. What Central Texas butchers discovered was a revelation. If they smoked that brisket over low heat for 10 hours or so, the meat became tender and delicious. Thus was born the barbecue brisket, a champion of the Texas dinner table to this day. We start our brisket journey by keeping it simple. Central Texas brisket relies only on wood smoke, salt, and pepper for flavor. First, we'll rub our meat with a mixture of coarse black pepper and coarse salt. You are literally creating a crust, what barbecue pitmasters call bark, with this rub, so you slather it on until you can't see the meat. When all sides have a rub applied, cover the brisket in a foil pan and leave it to sit in the refrigerator overnight. The salt will start to work into the meat, hopefully imparting flavor to your finished product. After letting the brisket sit, bring it out, let it come up to room temperature, and reapply the salt and pepper rub as needed. If this were any other style of brisket, we might add any number of spices to the rub, or sweeteners like brown sugar. But this is Central Texas style brisket, and the rules are strict. Salt and pepper only. To make a brisket, you'll need a barbecue smoker. Some will burn wood logs, some will burn charcoal, and some, like this one, will burn wood pellets. The advantage of a pellet smoker is that it will feed pellets into the fire steadily in order to keep a consistent temperature inside the smoker. Wood and charcoal smokers have to be constantly monitored. Regardless of the smoker, you'll try for a temperature of 275 degrees. You'll place a brisket in the smoker directly on the grill, close the lid, and commence waiting. Keep a meat probe handy in order to test the temperature and tenderness of your product. Somewhere around the four hour mark, you might notice that the temperature of your brisket just isn't moving up anymore. Pitmasters call this the stall. It happens because moisture is leaving the brisket and covering the outside in a layer of moisture that effectively keeps cooling the brisket down. At this point, you could do something called the Texas crutch. Pull the brisket and wrap it tightly in tinfoil, which would accelerate the cooking process. Or, and this is what I would prefer, you could just wait it out. The stall will end, and one benefit to leaving the meat alone is that the bark will wind up crunchy rather than soggy. After about seven hours on the smoker, 
your Central Texas brisket will be getting close to done. Use your temperature probe to test the meat. If it slides in without resistance or push, then you know you are done. Look for an internal temp anywhere from 195 to 203. When you pull it off the smoker, be aware, it's not time to eat yet. Put the meat in a cooler with a heavy towel over it and let it sit for a few hours so the fats and juices in the meat can redistribute. After about 12 hours of total cooking time, not counting your overnight salting, you're ready to slice some brisket. You might have noticed a missing element, barbecue sauce. In Central Texas, at least, using sauce is considered tantamount to a crime, covering the flavor of a well-smoked piece of brisket. There you have it. Central Texas-style barbecue brisket, served up, finally, smoked and delicious, right here on History Eats.